In the last 30 years, childhood obesity has more than tripled in the country, as you are both aware. What's more, a recent study finds many infants, toddlers, and young children's diets already missed the mark on key foods and nutrients. So what is a parent to do? There, here with new findings, we're going to discuss some new findings from what's called the FITS study, Feeding Infants and Toddlers Study, or FITS study. And uh, we're going to be talking to both of you, pediatrician Ryan Cavallo, medical director for Gerber, and Dr. Regan Bailey, an associate professor at Purdue University. Dr. Cavallo, tell us more about the FIT study. Sure. The Feeding Infant and Toddler Study is the largest study in U.S. kids that's focused on how and what our youngest babies, toddlers, and preschoolers are eating. And what it really highlights for us is that what parents and caregivers feed their babies and toddlers in those first few years of life sets the foundation for their eating habits even later on in life. All right. And what, and what, what have we learned from the study? Well, there's a lot of great takeaways from this study, but I'll focus on two. The first is that infants 6 to 12 months of age, that critical window where we start to introduce solid foods, are increasingly at risk for iron inadequacy from the diet. So what parents and caregivers can do is to make sure to also, during this time window, incorporate iron-rich foods like meats, iron-fortified cereal, and beans. The second thing that I'd like to share with you is that about one in four Infants, toddlers, and preschoolers don't have a vegetable on any given day. And among those who do consume a vegetable, French fried potatoes is number one. So with these taken together, we see diets that are low in vitamin D, potassium, and fiber. And on the other hand, we also see excessive intakes of sodium, saturated fats, and added sugars. All right. Um... And so, essentially, we have to have parents know how to uh, avoid those or limit those. Yeah, we want to encourage fruits, vegetables, and whole grains, so that will help enhance the low nutrients as well as the iron foods that we talked about. And choosing low-fat milk or skim milk at the appropriate ages is important for lowering saturated fat and reducing the sugar-sweetened beverages and cakes and cookies as dessert and try to incorporate a fruit instead would be some small tangible steps that parents could take to help better align nutrient intakes. And Dr. Bailey, are there any other specific things we would want to mention? Well, I think that we can use opportunities like snacking occasions as a great way to increase fruit and vegetable intakes. We also want to be good role models. I know Dr. Carvalho has three children, and maybe he'll tell us about how he models intake for his kids. Absolutely. You know, well, in the pediatrician, I'm so proud to be a dad of three young kids under five years of age, and my youngest is seven months. And what the Feeding Infant Toddler Study has really highlighted for me is that those babies, those tiny tummies, need big nutrition. So in starting him on baby food or his first solid foods, we actually used iron-fortified infant cereals. But you can also use beef or beans as great ways to get them the iron that they need. For our older kids, we try to make feeding fun. So we try to get them vegetables, because we know that just because you put food in front of a child, they might not always like it. As Dr. Bailey pointed out, it could take up to eight to 10 times for a child to like a food. So try it in different ways. Try different tastes of food. Try a variety of textures and try a rainbow of colors such that they get the orange vegetables like carrots and squash and the green veggies like green beans or broccoli to their diet in fun ways like trying foods, new foods, along with foods they love or mixing foods in different ways, like using carrots and hummus, 
or broccoli with dipped in ranch is a great way for these kids to enjoy the vegetables that we know they need. Okay, and why are these findings so important? I'll ask both of you. Well, I think these findings are important because they shed the light on what we need to do to change. They also highlight the strides that we've made. So we've increased breastfeeding initiation and duration. So we are making progress, but it also helps us see where we have some points, some pressure points that we can do better on. Okay. And so the FIT study has been very helpful to us in uh, beginning to focus on this more. Absolutely, and a great resource for parents and caregivers and healthcare providers and for all of us to engage with is Gerber.com. It provides more findings of the study. It provides greater details of the study, but more importantly for parents and caregivers, it has a large number of tools and tips on how to make feeding fun but nutritious and set the children on the right path in life. And that's, that's www.gerber.com? That is absolutely correct. All right. Well, I want to thank both of you for sharing this information with my Health Power audience, and I'm sure it's going to be helpful to them as parents when they try to figure out how to make eating more um, enjoyable. Thank you, Dr. Goodwin. Okay. Thanks. Thank you. Thank Bye. you both of you. Okay.